Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. If you kindly open your Qurans from Surah Al An'am, chapter number six. Verse number 25, where we started yesterday, to verse number 36. For the love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد A way to Savior of Humanity, Imam Al-Mahdi alayhi salam. My respected teachers, elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you know by now, there are four categories of verses of the Holy Qur'an. The foundation of the Qur'an are those which are muhkamat, clear, decisive, unambiguous verses such that when you read it you can make sense of what the verse is telling you there are also those which are the mutashabihat they resemble something else they are unclear to you when you first read it we require to look deeper into the verse or use another verse, or to use the tafsir, or to use the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam, in order to make the ayah from mutashabih to muhkam, from unclear to clear, in order for us to be able to ponder upon the verse further. There are two other categories of verses. There are those which are the mubayyinat, and those which are the Mufassilat. Mufassilat are those which are detailing, expanding upon previous verse. In some way, some angle of discussion will come out further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk about the same subject, but from a different angle, in order for you to connect to those verses, expand upon those verses, for you to be able to see the nuances between them. Mubayyinat are those which are instructive verses, which will often give guidance to you and I about laws, about behaviors, about social boundaries. And both of these two sets of verses, the Mufassalat and the Mubayyinat, are expansions upon the Muhkamat, upon the clear verses. Yesterday, we took one verse and demonstrated how when we read it, it could be that I start reading it and it's very clear what's being told to me. But the moment I begin to interrogate the verse, the moment I begin to ask questions of what the verse means, you can see it can move from being muhkam to mutashabih. And so it requires us to make the same verse muhkam again in order for me to be able to go deeper and deeper and deeper into it. The first lesson that we took away yesterday was that the answers can often be found within the verse itself. It just requires for us to revert back to the verse, which often will give us the answers. And if we can't find the answer in the verse, 
then we have to go to another verse or to a hadith or a tafsir in order to make it muhkam again. Let's have that verse come up, inshallah. Chapter number six, verse number 25, if you open your Qur'ans, just to remind ourselves where we are. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the subsequent verses in this group of verses. We're going to look at them and you'll see that as we read it, inshallah, the verses are muhkam for you. But the moment we start interrogating and asking questions of the verses, you will be required to go back to the very same group of ayat in order to make it muhkam again for you. And you'll see how things pop out at you. Really interesting, detailed discussions pop out at you in the sequence of verses. So let's just make sure we all remember yesterday's verse. Surah Al-An'am, verse number 25. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُ إِلَيْكَ There are those who pretend to listen to your speech, Ya Rasulullah. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْلَهُوهُ وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقَرَىٰ and as a result of them pretending to listen to you, the laws of this universe are that their hearts will not be able to understand and capture what is being said. Their ears will have a weight and a deafness within them. Such, hatta idha jauka yujadilunaka. Or actually, wa in yara kulla ayatin la yu'minu biha. And even if they were to see every sign come to them, they would still not believe. To what extent is this hatta idha jauka such that even if they were to come to you, Ya Rasulullah, they would argue with you. What do they say? يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ They argue with you. The unbelievers say, this is nothing but fairy tales that you are talking to us about. It's clear what is being said. But the moment we began to interrogate the verse and ask very basic questions, many of us stumbled. We said, well, what's the answer to some of those questions? For example, we might ask yesterday, how does Allah tell the Prophet in the verse, whom is pretending to listen to him in his speech? He's inside Masjid Nabawi. He's speaking to a hundred people. Many of them are pretending to pay attention to him. How do you know, Ya Rasulullah? Whom should you keep an eye out for so you know to be careful, cautious of these people? And we can see in the ayah itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, there are those that when they come to you, hatta idha jauka, yujadilunaka, they actually argue with you about this. And what do they say to you? In هَذَا إِلَّا أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ This is nothing more than just tales of the ancients. And this was the clue inside of the verse. Now, not only do we have to make an ayah muhkam, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals a group of verses together. You'll often read this, right? You'll see a group of verses and they seem to be talking about the same issue or broadly the same issue. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the Quran, sometimes he reveals one ayah at a time. Sometimes he reveals two ayat at a time. Sometimes he reveals five ayat at a time. Sometimes he reveals an entire chapter at a time. As part of this, movement between what is mutashabih for you and I is also to be able to make a group of verses move from being mutashabih to muhkam. And so it requires us to do exactly the same process. We need to read the group of verses. We have to try to make sense of them. If one verse from amongst the five, from amongst the four is mutashabih, I have to make it muhkam. How do I do that? By understanding the verse, looking at other verses, using the tafsir, using a hadith of Ahlul Bayt salam, making the group of verses muhkam, and then I'm in the privileged position to be able to do tadabbur of those group of ayat. Furthermore, that's what I want to do with you this evening, inshallah. And we're going to do it twice. 
I'm going to show you from verse 25, a small group of verses. We'll try to make them muhkam. We'll make them mutashabih. And then we'll make them muhkam again. And then we'll go further into another five verses that follow on all the way from verse 25 to 36. And we'll see how even 10, 11, 12 verses, when you begin to see them as a group, you can see how many different things jump out at you. The, the depth of the verses that come out just by moving between muhkam and mutashabih, by applying, applying to fakkur and then later on tadabbur. And this, of course, is for the exercise of making sure we all know how to navigate muhkam and mutashabih, how to navigate muhkam and mufassalat, so that we can see how we can go between verses in different parts of the Qur'an and see how they explain things to us. Once we practice this and we know how to do it practically, it becomes easier for us to be able to perform the techniques of tadabbur, which we will surely come on to bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Okay, let us read together. Please have your Qur'ans open, or if you cannot, then make sure you can see the verses. And as per last night, we'll read them, and then I'm going to throw it back to you. We're going to ask some questions. We'll make it mutashabih, and we'll make it muhkam again, inshaAllah. But it will be you that makes it muhkam. You will provide those answers, inshaAllah. So we've read verse 25. Let's move on to verses 26 all the way to around maybe verse 30, inshaAllah. Verse number 26. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wahum yanhuna anhu. Wayanhuna anhu. They tell others not to listen. And they themselves don't listen. They don't stay around to listen. Who is they? Whom? The munafiqeen from the previous ayah, right? You remember in the previous ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَيْكَ They are those who pretend to listen to you. You remember that? So Allah is continuing on in the sequence. So it's muhkam for you, I hope, inshallah. It makes sense. If you didn't know whom was being referred to in this second ayah, then it's mutashabih. But as long as you follow the sequence, it makes sense to you. Whom is being referred to? Those who pretend to listen to the Prophet. What did they do? Wahum yanhuna an. They tell others, don't listen to the Messenger. What else do they do? Wayanauna anhu. And they try to themselves stay away from listening as much as possible. What else do they do? in yuhlikuna illa anfusahum wa ma They destroy none but their own souls. Don't realize that they are destroying their own souls. So by them pretending to listen, and by them trying to stop others to listen, they destroy their own souls. You know the stories, so many plentiful stories about how they used to stop people from listening to the Qur'an, listening to the speech of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet would be reciting Qur'an, they would literally speak loudly to drown out the recitation of the Holy Qur'an. They literally would put their fingers in their ears. They would literally stop people coming to Masjid al-Haram and say, this man is reciting magic potions and spells. And if you listen to the verses that he's speaking, he will enchant you, be very, very careful. Famous story, one of the companions, he was one of the champion, champion, poets of his time and as you know there used to be an annual competition where they used to recite poetry and the winner of that year used to have their poetry hung on the door of the Kaaba you probably heard these stories even since the time of Madrasa one of these grand companions later on became a companion one of these grand poets was coming to the annual competition and the Quraysh warned him he said don't listen to the this recitation these poetries that he's going to enchant you. You'll fall under his spell. So, according to the narration, he wanted to perform tawaf of the Kaaba, but he put some cotton in his ear in order to make sure that he wouldn't listen to the Prophet As he's performing tawaf, he says to himself, I'm the champion of all of Arabia. 
How can his verses be better than mine? How can his verses put me under a spell? My verses should put others under a spell. He takes out those earplugs in my words. He takes out the earplugs. He listens to the verses of the Prophet He's never heard anything like this in his life. The narration says that the Prophet departs Masjid al-Haram, goes back to his house. This person follows the Prophet back to his house, knocks on the door, enters in, and does not leave until he has become a Muslim, reciting Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. They tell others not to listen, and they themselves try to stay away. Next verse. وَلَوْ تَرَى If only you could see them إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ If you could only see when they're in front of the fire of hell فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ If only we could be sent back to the earth What would we do differently? وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا We would not belie and reject the revelations of our Lord وَنَكُونَ and we would actually be believers. Muhkam, if only you could see what it was like on the day of judgment when these same people are going to wish that they could, they were gonna, they're gonna cry out, if only we would be sent back. Next verse. Now, the translation here is not good. It says, others say. But there's no evidence that others are talking about this. So just waqalu, they would say, there's nothing beyond this life. We're not going to be raised. What type of people say there is nothing other than this world? What would you classify them as? Ahsan, what would you call them as? Atheists. So in Mecca, Surah Al-An'am is revealed in Mecca. In Mecca, there are atheists, not only idol worshippers. There are atheists who used to say, there's nothing more than this dunya. Once we are buried, we are worm food. And that is the end of it. Next verse. I think we continue here. وَلَوْ تَرَى Allah continues, if only you could see them. If only you could see when they are made to stand in front of their Lord. Allah will ask them, is this not the truth? Indeed, we swear by our Lord, this is the truth. Taste the punishment. Takfurun, by virtue of what you used to do, what you used to deny. Now I want to go back to verse 28. If we can go back to verse 28, Ahsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that they want to be sent back. This is also in verse 27. So if you go to verse 27, go back. Here you go. Okay. Have a look at this. Uh, that's verse 26. Go forward one. Have a look at these two verses with me for a second. فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا If only we were to be sent back. This is something that they will say. Go back, uh, go forward to verse 28. That's 29, go back, 28. No, no, other way, there you go, okay. Now have a look, they say it again. فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا I think there's a verse, is there a verse missing here? There's a verse missing here? 
Okay, the sequence seems to be a little bit wrong. Maybe we need the brothers just to, to check it. This is why I said make sure you have your Qur'ans with you and your phones with you. Let's read it together. Make sure you read it with me. Verse 27, right? Don't worry about the screen for the moment. The brothers will fix it, inshallah. You follow on your Qur'ans. Verse 27. وَلَوْ تَرَى If only you could see. إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ When they stand in front of the fire of hell. فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ If only we could be sent back, we would not reject the communications of our Lord, we would be believers. Verse 28. They say the same thing. Verse 28. مَا كَانُوا يُخْفَوْنَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Nay, what they concealed will become manifest to them. So Allah is continuing on. What they used to hide will become manifest to them. And then they say again, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا If only we were sent back. لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُ عَنْ They would certainly go back to that which they are forbidden. Now, this is very important. Just make sure you're following with me. Verse 27, they say, if only we were to be sent back, we would not reject the communications of our Lord and we would become believers. Verse 28, Allah responds, وَلَوْرُدُّوا If we were to send them back to dunya, لَعَادُوا They would return back to what we forbade them from doing. Is this muhkam for you? Do you understand? They say, if only we were sent back, we would become believers. Allah says, if I were to send them back, they would go back to the things that they were doing. Now we said, we have to become inquisitive here. It's muhkam, but the moment we start to ask some questions, it might be that it becomes mutashabih, or it could be that you go deeper and deeper into the verses, right? So let's ask some questions here. You've read through the whole sequence of these verses with me, and you've got them in your Qur'ans in front of you. Who can tell me or give me some answers here? Allah testifies they would return back to the things that they were doing previously. Who can tell me what are the things that they were doing previously? Yeah. Let's be specific. Ahsan, they were denying the Prophet. So... Sure. Stick to stick to the ayat. Stick to the ayat. What what specifically were they doing? I agree. They were doing idol worship. But what were they doing from the ayat? We started from verse twenty five. So what were they doing? The first thing that verse twenty five says they were pretending to listen. Yes, one by one. So Allah says in verse twenty seven. They want to be sent back. Verse 28, he says, if I was to send them back, they would go back to doing exactly what they were already forbidden to do. So the inquisitive mind should immediately ask what? Well, what were they doing? Now, we don't go outside of the ayat to get those answers. Allah has already said to you in the ayat exactly what they were doing. As I said, there's a group of verses, isn't there? We're looking from verse 25 to verse number 30. So we have to review exactly those verses to make it muhkam again for me. At the moment, it's ambiguous. I don't know. I need to recount the verses. I need to review the verses and see exactly what they were doing that they would go back to, that Allah is testifying. So we go back to verse 25, go back to your Qur'an, go back to the beginning. What's the first thing that they were doing? They were pretending to listen. Number one. Continue on in verse 25. They would argue with the Prophet. They would argue with the Prophet and say to him, this is nothing more than a satirun 
Awalin, stories of the ancients. Second thing that they were doing. Verse 26, what's the third thing that they were doing? The sister just suggested it there. They were stopping others from being able to listen to the Quran. Verse 26, وَهُمْ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنْ What else were they doing? Verse 29. Verse 29, what were they doing? وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حِيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا They were saying that this is nothing more than this world. There's nothing else after it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing you within the sequence of verses the things that they were doing. They say, if only we could be sent back, we would not do these things. Allah says, no, no, you will go back to exactly these very same things. Now, what would be a natural question for you to ask at this point? So we've now, Allah has made a testimony. They would go back. And now we know what they would go back to. We've highlighted four things that they would go back to, correct? Because that's what they were doing. What would you normally ask? Imagine a madrasa student is in front of you. We have a lot of teachers here in the madrasa. And you say, God already tells you that he, if he were to send you back, will go back to the same things. What would be the normal question that a mother's a student would ask? We'll come to that. That's mufassilat. We'll come to that. Surah Mu'minun. We're coming to that, inshallah. Loudly. Why would they return back? to what they were already doing. Surely, if you see, remember the verse said, if you could only see them standing in front of the fire of hell, they would say, please send us back. But if I was to send them back, they would return to exactly the same things. Four things Allah testifies in the sequence that they would return back to. You rightly said, any Ordinary person would follow up and say, Subhanallah, why would they return back to me? Or maybe we could word it differently. Ya Allah, what is your evidence that they would return back to the same things? Surely, surely if they stood in front of the nar of Jahannam and in front of Allah, if only you could see when they stand in front of their Lord, they will say, my Lord, you are selling the truth. Allah still testifies. They're going to go back to the same things. Now, you know by now that this question, if we don't have an answer to it, the sequence of verses becomes mutashabih. It requires us first to go back into the sequence of verses to make it, to make it, Muhkam, ahsant. So let's do that. I'm not sure if the if the sequence is still with us. Verse number thirty. Walau tara, idh wukifu ala rabbihim. If only you could see when they stand in front of their Lord. Qala alisa hada bil haq. Allah asks them, Is this not the truth? Qalu bala wa rabbina. We swear by our Lord. Yes, it is the truth. Taste the punishment because you used to reject. Verse 31. They are losers indeed who reject the meeting of Allah. May Allah protect us. Until when the hour of death comes upon them. And all of a sudden they say, Ya hasratana ala ma farratna fiha. Our grief, how sorry we were for ignoring all of this. 
and they shall bear the burdens on their backs for what they have done. Tell me, in this sequence from verse 25 to verse 31, if you were to interrogate the Quran, my Lord, you, Allah, who is as sadiq or all truthful, Allah said, if I was to send them back, they would do exactly the same thing. You would rightly ask the Quran, but how can you make such a testimony, Allah? Fine, you are al alim you are all-knowing, you are Al-Khabir, all-aware. But how can you make such a testimony about this group of people? Where is your justification, my Lord? If we don't have the answer, it's mutashabih. We have to go back to the sequence of the ayah to make it muhkam. I'm asking you, help me out. Where in this sequence of verses from verse 25 to 31 appears to be the answer to this query, to make it muhkam? Sister has a hand at the back. Ahsant, that they see the Prophet and they deny him. Anything else? Ayah 30? Sorry, one more time louder. Ahsant, there's a seal on their hearts, so they would only go back to what they are doing. They insist that there's nothing beyond this life. So if they're insisting this, now the question I pose, Allah is saying, on the day of judgment, you've already seen death. You've already experienced the grave. You've been raised on the day of judgment. You're now standing in front of the Nar of Jahannam. You're seeing all of this. And then you make a promise to Allah, if only you were to send me back. Allah responds and says, I'm not sending you back because there's no point. You would just return back to that which you were already doing. What is the proof that they would go back? Have a look at verse 31 with me. Those who deny the encounter of their Lord until such a level of denial until the sa'ah, the moment of death comes to them, the hour of death comes to them. They now say, at the moment of death, when the angel of death comes to them, starts to take their soul, they say, Ya hasratana ala ma farratna fiha. How sorry we are for ignoring this. Let me ask a question. What is the gap in the sequence of their life in this set of verses? Let's make an assumption. Let's make some guesswork. Let's say a person was 40 years old when this event is happening to them. Allah in verse 31 is now making the prediction that at the end of their life, when death takes them, they will say how sorry we are. So let's say maybe that length of life is still 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They're living at 40. This incident, this series of verses are being revealed. Allah is predicting that by the time they die, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, now they will say, now we're so sorry for having ignored all this. So maybe 10 years have passed, 5 years have passed, 30 years have passed. What's happening here, such that Allah can use it as a proof on them, that they would always go back to what they were already doing. That Allah has an evidence. Say again. 
Yes, yes, but in, these, in this verse, not going outside the verses, we're looking at this set of verses. What is the evidence that in these sets of verses, Allah can testify, there's no point in me sending you back. Ahsan, indeed. So they, in the last moment of their life, they become sorry. So they're changing their mind. They could change it back just as easily, agreed. Let's say Allah makes a testimony in your moment of life. He says, listen, I'm sending you these verses of the Quran. I'm telling you what you're saying. I'm telling you what you're doing. And I'm telling you that between now and the next 30 years of your life, you won't make a change such that I'm telling you that on your deathbed, you will say, if only I had listened. Now I'm sorry for what I'm doing. What happened in those 30 years? Ahsan, I think that expands on what you were saying, right? At the time of um, desperation, we all turn to God. But then after the desperation leaves us, maybe we go back to what we were doing. So is that a proof? It's a proof, isn't it? Now we're really sorry for what we've done. And when they stand in front of Allah, now we're really sorry for what we've done. When death comes to them, now we're really sorry for what they've done. But you take those situations out, and how do they normally live? The way they were. Can you see? As you said, by virtue of their own act, their own act is a testimony upon themselves. Allah doesn't need to go further than their own behaviors. You yourselves only turn to me when it's too late. But every other time I've asked you to turn to me, you don't turn to me. So when I, Allah, testify that you will only go back to the ways in which you were, I have you as the evidence already for that. There's no point in me sending you back. I could send you back a thousand times. But unless in your ordinary day-to-day -day life you turn to me, then you won't turn to me other than when it's too late for you to turn. And the gap between their life and their death is the evidence of this. So the verse was revealed maybe when they were 40 years old, and then Allah predicts, when they die, now they will say, we're so sorry. Okay, so what happened in those five years between the time in which the verses were revealed or 20 years between now and when they actually die? Is there any evidence that they turn to God? No, because now we're sorry for what we've done. So even though I'm sending you these verses, even though I'm sending you this prophet, even though I'm actually quoting back to you your life, even though I'm telling you in Revelation what your behavior is like, none of it shakes you. And the only time it will actually shake you is when it's too late. At that point, I don't accept it. Therefore, I can tell you, there is no point in me sending you back. Immediately, the mother is a student who's normally very inquisitive about these things and says, where's the justice of God? How can God say, how can God not send this person back? It's right there inside the verse. And you both figured it out. They themselves will only make change when it's too late for them in life. So how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them anything other than that? Now that's making it mutashabih to muhkam in the sequence of the verses of the Quran. Tadabbur is very interesting here, isn't it? Because we're not only going to look at it in terms of the what God is telling the original recipients of the verses, the Makkans. Tadabbur says, you now need to take something that isn't directly there. 
I don't want you to put your hands up, literally, but hands up. How many times have we said to God the types of things that the Quraysh have said to God? Give me one more chance. Let me change my behavior. And how many times have we broken those promises to Allah? How many times have we called out in desperation to Allah, if you do this, I'll do this for you. I'll make sure I leave this sin from now on. Allah says, no problem, here you go. But I also know that if I keep sending you back and giving you these situations, there's no change in your behavior. There's no point in me sending you back. It happens to all of us. We've had 50 years of life, 30 years of life, and I still don't stop what I'm doing. Is it a testimony only to the Quraysh or is it a testimony upon me? Imagine when I get to the day of judgment, I say, my Lord, send me back. I will give up this sin. And say, but every time you said that and every time you tried, you didn't, you chose not to, you went back to it. There's no point in me sending you back. The verse is a testimony for me as much as it is for the Quraysh. Very interesting, isn't it? I can see myself in these verses. God forbid. With every muhkam, there is also mufassilat. Verses that become more detailed about the same topic, but from a different angle. Shows you how Allah wants to tell you about the same issue but in a slightly different way so that you may take something else away from it. Please open your Qur'ans to chapter number 23, Surat Al-Mu'minun, verses 99 to 100. This is the verse that the brother was mentioning earlier on, and I said we'll come to it, the Mufassilat, detailing another angle of the same verses. The brothers will, inshallah, bring the ayat on the screen as well. Chapter number 23, Surah Al-Mu'minun, verses 99 to 100. Everybody's there? You will have the ayat on your phone or on your Qur'ans? I'll give you 10 seconds. Inshallah. Everybody has the verse now? Let's read it together, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون when death comes to one of them he says my lord send me back in the previous ayah we saw the same sort of wording even if you would send me back I will not do what I was doing before I'll become a believer حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون my lord send me back to dunya Next verse, verse 100. Why? Why send me back? So that I may actually do good deeds, those which I left. I didn't do any good deeds. I didn't do my wajibat. I didn't stay away from the muharramat. I didn't do the mustahabbat. I left these things. Send me back so now I can do amal salih, the things that I left. Allah responds, kalla. You see, in Arabic, it's not just la. It's kalla. It's, by no means will we send them back. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. This is just a statement of theirs. It's just a word. It's a lie. They're not really going to do amal salih. They're not really going to go to the things that they left and should have done in their lifetime. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. This is just a word that he is saying. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ There is a barzakh until they reach the day of judgment, until they are raised again. And as you know, barzakh is that intermediary position before the Day of Judgment. Now, we had a previous set of verses. We had this verse. This verse is expanding. It's a mufassal. It's detailing something slightly different. Give me an example 
of something that is different in these two sets of verses, that even though it's speaking about the same subject matter, send me back, but that you can see that there's a new one. There's some new detail that is coming to light here. The brothers go back one verse to verse 99. What do you see that is slightly different that helps you to re-understand these, this issue, these verses? In both ayat, they want to come back to life. Ahsant. Can you see something slightly different between the two verses, such that the first one in the Surah Al-An'am is muhkam for you, and then this one is mufassil. It's detailing something slightly different. What is the slight nuance between the two sets of verses? What does that mean? Can you explain that further? Unfinished? Yes, in the next verse, so that I can do amal salih, which I've left. Very good. So now, in this verse, he's specifically saying, in the previous verse, he said, send me back so that I can believe. In this one, verse 100, he says, send me back, I can actually do amal salih. So, what you're actually highlighting is very important. One nuance. In the previous ayat, in Surah Al-An'am, he says, I just, I will believe. He doesn't say, I'm also going to do good deeds. In this one, he says, send me back. I actually want to do good deeds, Amal Salih. Is there a difference between Iman and Amal Salih? Yes. Many people believe. Does that necessarily mean they do Amal Salih? Doesn't necessarily mean it. So the first set of verses, the sister is highlighting a very important nuance, a detail here. Some people will say, my Lord, send me back. I won't reject you. I will believe in you. There are others who will say, my Lord, send me back. Not only will I believe in you, I will work hard and do good deeds. Some people believe, but they never work hard in life. Some people believe and they work hard in life. These two people should not be conflated with one another. The regret is slightly different. One other. What's another nuance? Okay, I'll tell you what. Focus, if you go back to verse 99, and I'll just give you a clue. Hatta idha jaa ahadahumul mawt. When in the previous set of verses in Surat Al-An'am was there regret? At what point? وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذَا وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ If only you could see them when they are standing in front of their Lord, or in the other verse, standing in front of Nar of Jahannam. When is that? Akhira. When is this verse taking place? That when? Death. Can you see? Allah is saying, regret desperation to be sent back will not just occur when you are standing in front of Jahannam or when you're standing in front of Allah for interrogation of your a'mal and the mizan. For some people, their regret starts when? The time of death. How many people have you seen they're approaching the last days of their life? And they're regretting what they have done. They're regretting that they don't have time. They're scrambling now to make amends. Now they have to pay their khums. Now they have to organize all their qadha salah. Now they have to call up people and say, I'm so sorry for what I did to you. Very late, very late in the day. So Allah is showing us here, there's a mufassil, there's a detail here. Allah is saying that this regret doesn't just start at nar. Some people, their regret will start at the point of death, and they have all that time in barzakh, in regret as well. This is the difference between muhkam and mufassil. You have a verse that you understand, but another verse adds something to it. Okay. 
So this is how you and I, as we practice this, we begin to make clear what we may not think is absolutely clear for us, moving between muhkam, mutashabih, muhkam, and mufassir. I really am so, so appreciative to you. Do you know that there's been several people after the lecture, before iftar, they will come up and say, you know, I've been reading the Quran today and this is a verse that was muhkam for me, but then this part of the verse made it mutashabih. Can you help me make it muhkam again? And I can't tell you how much of a delight it is that these terms are so interchangeable on the tip of your tongues and that you could even come to me and say, I understand this verse or I didn't understand this verse. How do we make it muhkam? As a person who's trying to get across these ideas to you, for you to come to me and say that, there is nothing, nothing more delightful to the heart than this. So feel free to carry on doing that whenever you see fit. Your homework is tonight and tomorrow to keep practicing this. All I want from you is as you're reading, is to find a group of verses that you've been reading. It might be two, four, five, six. Find the group of verses and look at it from the perspective that you know it's muhkam, something is clear to you. Then interrogate the verses, ask it questions and make it mutashabih for you. And then inside the very same sequence of verses, see if you can make it muhkam again for you. Don't make it too difficult. Three verses, four verses, nothing more than that, anywhere in the Quran that you like. Find a group of verses that for you are muhkam, ask questions of it that makes it mutashabih, and then if you can, return it back to being muhkam. If you feel confident enough tomorrow, any one of you, stand up at the beginning of the discussion and tell us how the verses were muhkam, how you made them mutashabih, and then how you made them muhkam again. The more we practice this, the better we will become at it. These are the foundations, and then inshallah we apply the techniques of tadabbur, which we'll do in the coming days. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salli ya Rabbi ala khiratika min khalqik Muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam to allow us to be alongside him at all times in our life and in our death. If we were to pass away from this world before his coming, Ya Allah, raise us from our graves so that we can partake in the victories of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. We ask you, Allah, help us to fast better in this month. Help us to ponder upon the Quran better in this month. Help us to be able to reach the nights of Layali al Qadr and the day of Eid with our family, friends, and community. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In honor of our 12th Imam, please give us a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.